Welcome back to the show. Today we're back with an opinion video talking about the future of camera manufacturers, the small scale camera manufacturers, small tinkers, and so on. This show is supported by Patreons and PayPal donations. I'll leave the link below. If you like this kind of video, please uh, think about supporting uh, the channel. So what do I mean by small camera manufacturers? I mean the new wave of camera makers that have been making either large format cameras like this standard camera next to me, uh, cameras like Intrepid, uh, Chroma cameras, Dora Goodman, um, Camera Dactyl, and some others. What do I mean by the small ones? Basically, these are people, tinkers, thinkers, uh, doers that have been doing these cameras, these accessories and tools for film photography in the past basically decade, maybe a little bit less. Uh, and have been growing their scale of operations to sometimes more people, sometimes to little factories and so on. And what I think should be the future. One thing I've been seeing throughout the news is all these little projects start as a passion thing, just like I started YouTube as a passion thing and it's become something more serious. Now it's even part of my job. Um, it is something that people start with a passion. Film photography, at least a decade ago, was not exactly the thing you would turn around and say, hey, I want to make a lot of money. I'm going to start doing film photography stuff. It was more like, hey, I have a job or something else that keeps my you know, food on the table and roof over my head. I'm going to start doing this thing because I think there's an interesting you know, niche here that would be cool with the new technologies that are coming out, like 3D printed, laser cutters being accessible to more people. Let me tinker and make things accessible for people uh, that want to shoot these large format stuff and so on. So when that happened, these tinkers started doing these projects. Like I said, Intrepid cameras, Camera Dactyl, you know, Chroma cameras, all these guys. Um, and what's happened is the small uh, scale possibilities of 3D printing and so on is massive. But at the same time, it's very demanding per unit. So when you are manufacturing any kind of thing, I don't mind if it's cars or cameras or chairs or anything, if you're making one at a time, that's going to be a luxury item. It's going to be expensive. Just go ahead and call your local carpenter and ask for a custom dinner table. It's going to run you a couple thousand dollars, a thousand euros minimum uh, for even them to just consider making a table for you. But if you go to, a, I don't know, a, a huge chain, let's say Ikea, and you get a table, they're nine euros, 10 euros, 50 euros because they're making thousands. What happens with the 3D uh, printed community, laser cutting and aluminum extrusion parts that are like massive made like these uh, is that, or small scale made, is that they require, like I said, a lot of attention. For camera dactyl to make a thousand camera dactyl OG 4x5 camera, he's got to sit down and see their, his farms of 3D printers and he's spending all his time tending to these printers. 3D printing is very, hand intensive with keeping up with the printers that they're running well that they're not you know melting I don't know anything about 3d printers but I know they require a lot of work and the same time as screwing things together it's kind of like a bit more like one by one sanding them stuff like that which requires these tinkers these thinkers these people that can create beautiful things and tools that are necessary for the film community be sitting down tending like attending their machines and their businesses and then also trying to sell them so they're doing the manufacturing, the designing, the marketing, the logistics, and the shipping. And this is where I see a problem. They are one-man bands most of the times that are having a hard time to keep any sort of like production workflow. Um, the one exception to this rule, at least one of them, is uh, Intrepid Cameras. Max uh, from Intrepid Cameras, which I've interviewed before, way when back when came out with the idea of massive producing four by fives in big batches. So he would not make one at a time, but he would make like the bellows for 50 cameras, the standards for 50 cameras, the base plate for 50 cameras and so on. So he could lower the price and make quantity, which is a good idea. But even Max is having a hard time with sometimes producing enough for the demand he was having. So I think I would like to see a change in the future for small camera manufacturers and small camera accessory manufacturers like Reveni and so on to start being more of just leading the way with thinking and like mind, like creating things, but then seeing a partnership with maybe people that are more used to manufacturing more skills 
of things so we merge together. And this is my idea basically is imagine Ethan, Ethan from Camera Dactyl, amazing guy, super smart guy. I really value him as a friend, as a camera maker. Uh, he's very good at thinking and producing these things. And then grabbing someone, let's say Intrepid, who is good at mass manufacturing these products and merging. Having Ethan be able to design future cameras and products and things with the intention of mass producing them or mass producing them, let's say film mass production nowadays will be the, you know, maybe a thousand, two thousand, three thousand units. That would be what I would like to see. I think we have too many little one man band things, which are great, but at the same time, they're all fighting for the same kind of niche. When I think we should have some sort of association of some industry and Pixelator is one of these examples. Pixelator has this uh, scanning device that they came out with. They did a campaign like a ca uh, Kickstarter crowdfunding campaign. And then they partner with AP Photo, which is doing the trays and the tanks and all this stuff because they're used to injection molding. <clears throat> and this is like a merging of an idea with a produce like a production uh, run. So I want to try to see maybe some of these uh, makers step down and obviously they need to do it economically uh, possible to step down from just making to thinking and figuring out things like for the longer run for more refined products. I've seen a lot of these like inventions and I love stuff like this, like the standard camera to me is one of the coolest concepts that it's a monorail camera that you could 3D print or you could buy from them. And basically it requires only probably under 200 bucks to make one, which is a really small entry fee to large format. Film is way more expensive and lenses and stuff, but it's like beautiful. But I also want to see more. I want to see like, we are a junior level large, like a camera making. I want to see the next level. And for that, I feel like we have to kind of merge these production places with these thinkers that can make a better product and make more of them. And by making more of them, we have a bigger market. We have more options to sell it out there. And one example is Light Lens Lab. If you've heard of the camera, a lens manufacturer based in China, these guys are making uh, basically obsolete patents of Leica lenses. They started with the V18 element 35 millimeter Sumicron. Uh, and they produce their own version. And this is already in a factory somewhere in China where they're making, you know, thousands of other lenses or their lens optical lens manufacturer. And they're producing these lens copies or copies uh, of the Leica stuff. And they're producing this beautifully. And it's one of those things where you grab the idea, you grab the possibility of production in scale and you merge them and you have this small manufacturer that's maybe making a thousand lenses at a time, which sounds like a lot, but if you go to any other manufacturer, I don't know, Sony, Nikon, Canon, they're making thousands and thousands of lenses. So a thousand lenses, a very short run. So like, that's what I want to see. And it doesn't have to be mainland China. It doesn't have to be in the US or in Europe. I just want to see something happen. I think the future of these manufacturers are, they are struggling. And I won't say struggling because of time or this, it's because sometimes they're running too much stuff or they are too busy with orders or there's a huge backlog or they don't have time to design stuff. Like they are too busy in a way and it's a hard market for them. But at the same time, they're very good at thinking and designing things and maybe trying to make a product. And I want to see, like I said, the next step. So I would like to know what you guys think about the small scale manufacturing and what the future of them is. Because we've seen, like I said, all those manufacturers kind of hit a stall on what they can produce and what they can market because they can't scale up without more human work involved due to the low volume and the demanding amount of time you have to spend with 3D printing, laser cutting, like, you know, basically screw driving things. Uh, some brands, like I said, have done it well. Like one I've seen in-house is Valoi, for example which are doing a scanning uh, also solution. Valoi, which what they have done is make a product that requires very, very little ensembling. So you don't have to do a lot of stuff to put it together. Plus big runs, they're running a thousand or 2000 of each item that they sell. 
so the price per item lowers and then they can just kind of batch it like a factory. And it sounds less romantic when you think of a factory, but if you go ahead and look at those old Roly Flex factories or Hasselblad factories or Leica factories, there was thousands of people putting Roly Flex together. There was not one guy in his basement making them one by one. They were making hundreds and thousands and that is towards what we try to do. And I'm not thinking that we're gonna have a new Roly Flex or a new Leica camera made in the thousands of units, but I think between them and us right now, there has to be a line that goes towards, and like I said, a few brands have managed to do this, but I wanna see more uh, companies figuring it out so they can put more products, more thought out products, more finished products into the market and consumers can enjoy them. The lifespan of some of the 3D printed cameras or cheaper entry level cameras made now is shorter than what it used to be. So I wanna see that also close down a little bit. You don't see a lot of cameras of these in secondhand market because they're usually so cheap, it's not worth to sell them or they're not made to last forever. So they kind of maybe wear a little differently or worse. So yeah, that's my idea for this video and the opinion of what do I think things should go. Like I said, I have a view of the industry that is maybe very narrow, maybe very wide. I don't know, I would love to hear you guys' opinion uh, about this specific topic and the future of small manufacturers in the camera industry. So yeah, thanks for watching. Like I said, this show is sponsored basically by you guys, basically becoming Patreons or PayPal donations so I can make videos that are not in the usual, you know, hype uh, or clickbait or whatever you want to call on YouTube. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one. Bye.